Welcome back Doomers. Today we're doing a big one and I mean a big one. So big that you might be satisfied just with this. But if that's just got you more interested stick around because we are doing the big muff deep dive. And yeah, that's not just a clickbait title. There's a lot of big muffs down here. Why are there so many big muffs out there? We're going to hopefully bust some myths here. And while we're at it, maybe we'll find the perfect big muff for you. Let me introduce this beautiful array of muffs. So along the top row, we have the Electro Harmonics reissues. I love every single one of these. They've done so well in recreating what the big muff somehow became over the years. And it's worth mentioning right there, these are different, not because they were supposed to be different. So as Electro Harmonics have gone on over the years, little changes changed the Big Muff to different species. It was a proper evolution, right? Little change by little change, every time a new batch would leave the factory, eventually led to something that in hindsight was different, particularly when we look at these two, the triangle and the ram's head. Theoretically, they shouldn't have been any different. Then we'll move on to this bottom row here, which is some popular, you could say clones, more evolutions in a lot of cases. I think there's only really one clone here and that would be the Hizumitas and that's got its own twist to the story as well. So we have got Earthquaker devices, we've got the Keeley Moon and we've got the Black Arts Toneworks, Pharaoh and Priestess. And today we're going into the Electro Harmonics MiG-50 reissue. That's because it really lets you know where the base is. So let's just dive into some muff. Here they all are with all of the knobs at noon, except for some of the extra knobs on the deluxe, which bring in like very different features. I'm doing this because there will be vast differences. Let's start with the reissue of the OG. What did we hear first off? The Zumitas is ridiculously fucking loud. I mean, I know that a couple of these, the bats might get that loud when we change the clipping options, when we take the clipping off, but jeez. Man, good job I set my gain levels to the Hazumi task because that's insane. So what else do we find? T the difference between the triangle and the ram's head actually is, uh, you know, sometimes I don't hear the difference between these two, but I could hear it then. The ram's head's got um, what people would identify as like more mix ready kind of presence to it. It's kind of more, um, it sounds a bit more distortion, a bit more metal if you like. Was the triangle, I'd say that honestly, the triangle is the most muff here. Being the OG, it is muffled. It's really thick. Um, it sounds awesome. It's just that little bit of lift that could have been put there by a tube screamer, but it's not, it's already there in the ram's head. Then we got uh, a big volume drop from the deluxe. Which doesn't surprise me. The Deluxe is here today instead of this guy because it basically is that guy with some bells and whistles added. Although this is a, this is an early noughties and there were still some of those little evolutionary changes to bring it to what you buy straight off the shelf today. They essentially sound the same. So that's why the Deluxe is here. And I always found that with the volume. I actually took my, yeah, the Big Muff back to the shop I bought it from when I was 
younger and less experienced in fact probably my first year playing guitar i think i got it and i said it, it's really quiet now my strat at the time this if anyone's got a keen eye they might have recognized that this is a tom de long strat and it had an invader in the in the one pickup slot and an invader is a very high output passive pickup like one of the most high output passive pickups so the clean was really loud compared to the big muff at full volume and it's only when i got some other guitars and they had lower output pickups that i realized that the big muff generally does have plenty of volume just not in those situations so particularly if you've got active pickups and the like you'll just find a big muff in its modern standard form is surprisingly quiet then we got to the green and we're back up in volume a bit <laughs> And it really is kind of overdrivey. That red, it's a red army overdrive. It's essentially the same circuit as what appeared in the red army overdrive. So Electroharmonics have shifted their manufacturing over to Russia. The Russians should have made the same pedal, but it was ridiculously different, which is just classic, isn't it? US to Russia, things should be the same and they're just not. It sounded really cool actually that one, but then, the op amp, this really surprised me when I first got it. It's fucking horrible. And you'll often see the op amp recommended. I'd still recommend it, but God damn, that's why we're gonna move these tone knobs around because it's ridiculous by noon. It's, and so compared to all those other tone knobs, uh, to the big muff tone stacks, this, to this, to this, to this. And then let's hear the tone off juicy so then we got to the pharaoh and everything got really dark real tube screamer style mid-range is proper vocal like hump vowelly sounding um then the keely moon just sounds like it's all on already even though it's halfway <laughs> Now the moon's interesting because that filter control acts like a rat's filter. It's actually a high frequency filter. It's no, we don't get the big muff tone stack in this unless you can count this little toggle switch here, um, which I've currently got flat. So let's hear it scooped and boosted and flat. And then if I put this filter up, we'll just get more high end and down, we'll roll it off. Because you still have lows when you get to the top of it. So you can hear that the um, the curve isn't changing, it is just letting through more high end or not. Then we got to the hoof. Now I think the hoof, is the hoof a muff or is the hoof just a hoof? The hoof, I'm going into that space again. So to me a muff isn't a distortion, it isn't a fuzz, it's a muff. It's a its own thing and i don't think the hoof is in that anymore i think the hoof is a hoof it's like its own thing and if anything it's a muff derived drive <laughs> And I think it's because it's not got that low end saturation, that like low mid. When I first got it, I was disappointed in a way. Um, now I've learned to love it because the hoof is a hoof. So the Hazumitas, I'm gonna turn it down. Gets the muff back, I think. And uh, it's really kind of. really aggressive in your face. This is supposed to be a triangle because the Japanese took uh, the triangle muff. They made the elk sustainer. Sometimes they were just called big muffs. They actually had big muff written on them. And they were supposed to be a clone of a triangle, but just like when the Russians were supposed to make another big muff, it ended up being weirdly different. So here's the triangle. And here is the Hazumitas. And here is the ram's head. Closer to a ram's head, but still not quite there. Listen to the green by side. I'm gonna give the green a load more top end. It's got the green's low end, I think. That, I mean, massive low end. In certain circumstances, it sounds like the Green Russians got like a clean octave underneath it. So 
It's kind of not like any of them. But definitely not like the triangle. So that's, uh, I think that's why we love the Hazumi Taz because it's its own thing. It's another, just one of those little flavors of muff that definitely sits in the, you know, the pantheon of muffs, but still manages to be its own thing. So let's play a game. How low can your muff go? So I'm gonna set every sustain knob at zero. And you know what else I'll do? I'll even out some of these tones and volumes as well. No one plays a muff down there. Let's crank it. once the Hazumatas didn't blow my head off. So I'm not just hearing, I'm feeling as well, and it's probably better translated that feeling between them on high gain that there's quite a lot of differences. I only played two power chords there, but that deluxe felt the thickest. The moon has something of its own where the be the low end, what would otherwise be like, so kind of sound like an octave that's going along with you with the Hazumitas and the Green Russian. The moon kind of melds it all together into something super fat. <laughs> Yeah, and the pharaoh, you know what, all these are pharaohs sounding kind of pathetic. <laughs> I'm on the high gain setting of the pharaoh, right? Am I? Am I? Am I? Yeah, silicon clipping. Basically, all of these have silicon clipping except for the hoof, which has germanium. So the best comparison with it really is on the silicon clipping. It sounds less saturated. It's got less bass. It's got way more mids, but it retains the muffy character. I think that's <laughs> where the hoof is kind of confusing. There's not that oomph behind the palm mute. <laughs> that's still there in the Pharaoh. So the Huff is a popular pedal, so popular. I hear it recommended on bass because, oh, it's derived from a green Russian. So you should try it on bass. Don't try it on bass. There's no bass in it. Did you hear that? There's no bass in it. Use a green for bass. Use a Hizumitas for bass. Use a moon for bass. So let's check it out. Overall, surprised me. The triangle. Holding its own against the green. Though the green definitely has that low end in there. The deluxe Big Muff bass boost still knocks it out of the park. I'm getting on with the bats as well. For the Pharaoh giving the guitar like basically no low end and a whack load of mid range. It's retaining that bottom end pretty well, which is surprising. Still giving a load of mid-range. Might actually push you through a mix if you're doing a bit of a bass solo. The moon, where'd the moon go? It's just kind of become woolly. Well, that kind of bowled me over actually. So the moon is definitely more suited to guitar, I found in that one, um, surprisingly, all the electro harmonics muffs sounded pretty cool on bass, although the green is still my favorite. Now there is a deluxe bass big muff, and there's a bass big muff, but the big muff is already rocking on bass, right? 
back to the studio. Okay, Doomers. I'm losing to a pair of headphones. I turn my head. The camera thinks that pair of headphones looks more like a face than this. So I guess this is the studio. Obviously, you can probably tell this is me on a different day. This is me on edit day. And I'm getting through this monster of a video and finding that it's just getting too long. And I don't want the back end of this to get lost to people's attention. I mean, I'm exactly the same. I would be dropping off about this time. But what this next part will go into is sort of crisscross comparisons across the board, changing lots of settings, using the clipping modes when you have them and looking at the deluxe and how it can emulate other pedals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is gonna be part 1A. The next part will be part 1B. And at the end of part 1B, I'll tell you what could potentially become part two. So I hope to see you there. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to know when part 1B drops. It won't be too long and I'll see you next time. Fuck you, Doomers.